your next contract, there's a possibility that you will be the highest paid quarterback in, in the history of the league. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, a, that's a great potential of that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, how does that? Does that make you feel good? Does that mean that? Cool? Well, you know, uh, it's not. It's not gonna make me feel bad. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that was last month on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Russell Wilson, the Seahawks quarterback there. And Chris, I got to give you credit. I mean, I, it was easy for me to say, hey, based on that answer. This is what Russell Wilson wants. He's sending a message. You took it next level and said the question was planted. We, we don't know that. We're surmising. We're speculating that the question was planted by Russell Wilson's people so it would even be out there. So they would have a chance to send that message because the bottom line is this. Russell Wilson has provided a deadline to the Seahawks of today for doing a long-term contract. Peter King reports in Football Morning in America that the or else isn't simply that he won't sign a long-term contract this year or next year. It's that he will never, ever sign a long-term deal with the Seahawks, which means that he inevitably will sign a long-term deal with someone else which bolsters what we reported over the weekend that the Seahawks believe he does want to play somewhere else. And if they don't give him what he wants, or if he wants so much that they can't give him what he wants, that's the message. Russell Wilson at some point likely to play for another team. The only question is how does it play out? Trade, free agency, does he hang around a couple more years under the franchise tag? We'll see how that goes. But without that long-term deal today, it's a matter of when, not if, in my opinion, Russell Wilson is gone from the Seahawks, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy. I, you know, I did not expect Russell Wilson to be giving the Seahawks this type of ultimatum, certainly, especially a guy, you know, who's been very pro-organization, probably a little too pro-organization. I mean, he did. He gave the team probably too friendly of a deal the first time around, and he's probably a little bitter towards that as well. Uh, but, hey, where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's just been too many things this offseason, whether it's Jimmy Fallon and that, which is, was a planted answer. I, I, you know, again, I'm not even going to – or planted question at least certainly looks that way, uh, the way it played out. Okay, there was rumors early on in the offseason about, you know, the New York Giants and Russell Wilson. We have Jack Del Rio coming out last week. Don't be shocked if there's a trade. I know you and I have heard things behind the scenes, right? So uh, – and then – you know, again, you hear things about his wife, Sierra, who, of course, is a big deal herself and a phenomenal singer and all of that to where she wants to get out. So to me, when you start to hear multiple people, multiple different reasons about Russell Wilson maybe getting out of Seattle, hey, I don't know how much of it's true, but I think some of it's true. There's some truth there altogether. And it certainly seems if Russell Wilson made this kind of demand or drew this kind of line in the sand that, yeah, it's almost sending a signal that he wants to be out of Seattle, maybe right now or at the very least at the end of next year. Yeah, you know, I had heard last May that there was regret on his part that he had done a long-term deal the last time around. Now, the last time around, the deal he did, $21.9 million in new money, that was just under Aaron Rodgers, $22 million per year as the high watermark at the time. The problem is he started to be leapfrogged, as did Rodgers, by guys like Derek Carr, Matthew Stafford, Jimmy Garoppolo, Kirk Cousins. Rodgers got his long-term deal now at $33.5 million. Wilson's still at twenty one million. And I think Wilson, after seeing what Kirk Cousins did going year to year and forcing his way to the market, is kind of fascinated with the idea of doing that, reluctantly engaging in contract talks with the Seahawks and making significant demands. And I think one of the things it's going to take to keep him, Chris, a commitment by the Seahawks that there will be a set percentage of the salary cap that he will get. He'll have a floor that is a negotiated hard dollar amount. But as the cap goes up, and there's three factors yeah. to keep in mind, new CBA, new TV deals, and the constant growth of legalized gambling. Seven states currently have it legalized. 23 more have it in the hopper. The revenue opportunities for the NFL will mushroom. And that means more money available under the salary cap, which means more quarterbacks will be leaving Russell Wilson in the dust, even if he gets $34 million. Without that percentage commitment, as we get through some of these big events coming up that will drive the salary cap higher, you're going to see Baker Mayfield, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, not in that order, get more than Russell Wilson. So you protect yourself with that percentage. And I don't think it's an unreasonable request. No one's ever gotten it. Others have asked for it. 
And if the Seahawks want to keep Russell Wilson, they're going to have to agree to it. Yeah, well, good luck. I don't think Pete Carroll and John Schneider are going for that, unless the ownership gets involved. But, again, here's the biggest point I want to make, and I think this is where the league's going to go. I mean, the, 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 fact, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. You want to talk about teams with quarterbacks with team-friendly deals and their success, well, let's go through it. Hey, the two quarterbacks in the Super Bowl this year, team-friendly deals. I mean, we know about Tom Brady, okay? All the times they've been in the Super Bowl. You got the Rams. How about the two times the Seattle Seahawks were in the Super Bowl? Of course, with Russell Wilson. That was still rookie contract. How about the Philadelphia Eagles who won the Super Bowl just two years ago? That was had uh, very favorable, you know, friendly contracts for the quarterback situation. How about the Baltimore Ravens who won the Super Bowl? Joe Flacco, rookie deal. Oh, the quarterback he was playing against, Colin Kaepernick? Guess what? Rookie deal. So you're seeing recent success here throughout with teams that are winning Super Bowls in the final four in the final game whatever it may be I just gave you a handful of examples of teams that are doing it. I don't think Seattle's going to budge on this there's no way uh and um uh, yeah I just don't think John Schneider and Pete Carroll the type of guys that are gonna they're not afraid to make bold moves Richard Sherman gone Earl Thomas gone Michael Bennett gone you know Marshawn Lynch gone I just nothing in their history says oh they're gonna make it about one player I know Bobby Wagner's there but he plays middle linebacker. He's still really awesome. He's certainly not going to command the type of money that uh, Russell Wilson or a top-tier quarterback is. So for me, it's looking like this is on the outs. And uh, this is, you know, the way it looks right now, April 15th, I think Russell Wilson, this is it in Seattle. Either he's done this year or he's done here in the next few weeks. Well, here's the thing, though. All those other guys, once they were were gone. Yeah. They had somebody that they could come in and replace him with. Now they had a hard time replacing yeah. Marshawn Lynch. And and now eventually they've got some guys there who can do it. But if if Russell Wilson is not the quarterback, you know who the other option currently is on the roster? Yeah, it's uh it's uh Paxton Lynch, right? Paxton Lynch. Yikes. Paxton freaking Lynch. And not that he would be the starter come week one, but if you trade Russell Wilson who is your starter going to be? And I think that's why this year he probably stays. I, I, I can't yeah, imagine. it seems I, hard. I, how, how do you let him go this year? But, you know, if he really doesn't want to be there and they sense he doesn't want to be there, why? what a weird lame duck season this would be because if he stays this year – Without that long-term contract, I, I, you know, how effective is he going to be in the locker room? It's almost like a head coach yeah. who doesn't have right. a contract beyond the, the given year. How much leadership, how much authority, how much weight do you have when people know this is it? I don't know, but uh, that's a real question. Yeah. But if you do move on from Russell Wilson, you got to have somebody else who can come in and take over. Yeah, that, I don't know who they right. would sign. You're right. That's, or draft. That's, or whoever. Whatever they would do. What yeah. would they do? Yeah, that's no, that's the big issue. You're right. There's no other option out there right now unless they have some master plan that we certainly can't put together or do anything like that. You know, to your point about the lame duck season, I think that's a legitimate question. I get it. Um, and yes, you know, I think there's going to be guys that are like, oh, you know, the hell with him. He's going to be out of here next year. But I don't think it'll affect, you know, leadership or at the very least, Russell Wilson's going to want to win football games. He still wants to be considered the best quarterback in football or in that conversation. So he's going to put his best foot forward, but it might not go that long of a ways to guys making personal relationships with them that way, where they're just going to make, well, he's going to be out of here in a few months. There's no point in me, you know, trying to be his best buddy or whatever may, uh, but I still think that. So what do you do? What if you, yeah. if you're the Seahawks, what do you do? If you don't sign to a long-term deal, do you keep him for one more year or do you see what else is out there and just hope for the best? I, I think right now, if I'm the Seahawks, just, you know, uh, I, I would go keep him for this year and you continue to weigh options and see what happens. I mean, I, you know, whatever it may be, uh, you know, whether they, whatever, trades, however it may be, if there's somebody that's out there and, you know, becomes available in training camp, whatever it may be, as far as a young quarterback, maybe they make a move right there. Gosh, I don't know if there's some trade talks going in the works right now before the draft, into the draft, then maybe they can make a move. But I think right now, just as far as it stands, yeah, I'm going into the year with Russell Wilson as my quarterback. I'm the Seattle Seahawks. I'm not going to pay them too much money. And uh, we'll see where this goes at the end of the year. But I don't think the Seahawks are scared to move on from Russell Wilson.
I, I, God, what, uh, how amazing that is, especially for the other teams in the NFC West. It was and, only a matter of time before someone I felt like had the guts to make this type of decision. And I'd always felt like the Seattle Seahawks, Schneider and Carroll would be the two that would flirt with it. And we'll see where it goes. Well, and, and who knows? They haven't blinked yet. Right. And maybe they will. Right. But um, I, if, if you're a team out there, I mean, think about it. You owe it to yourself. It's in the best interest of the team. It's the same comment that that uh, Mike Mayock made last week about Derek Carr, that we, we have to do our due diligence and see if there's an upgrade out there. I feel like every team owes it to itself to look at the quarterback it has right now and ask, is there a way to get Russell Wilson? And are we one of the teams that we think he'd want to play for? I mean, would the Giants, would the Giants do a uh, yeah, see you later, Eli Manning? We'll, we'll trade for Russell Wilson if this is where Russell Wilson wants to be. And he would take less from the Giants than he would want from the Seattle Seahawks. Do you make that call if you're Dave Gettleman and you've got multiple first-round picks that you could dangle? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, God, I, I, just, I mean, how much less it, is he going to take, though? You know what I mean? Like, okay, so less. So what, he's not going to get Aaron Rodgers money? Or he's going to get Aaron no, Rodgers no. money? You know what I mean? Yeah. What is, what's less? He's still, he's still going to be the highest-paid right. player in league history. It's just not going to be as much as it otherwise right. could have been. Right, Yeah, I know. So that's that's. I don't think that's in the Giants' DNA to do that right now, at least. I, I, I would be shocked. You know, and again, they're going to be on the hook for some Eli money, too, there. So if you add that on to okay we trade Russell Wilson and then whatever they wanted to do with Eli either having the backup or whatever ship him out of town I don't even know how that would work that'd be a lot of money on your team just you know for the quarterback position itself and I just don't think it's in the Giants DNA to make that type of bold move uh but and maybe they can prove me wrong yeah, I, I'm just I'm fascinated that we've gotten to this point because this is one of the boldest all-in moves I've seen from a player, and Russell Wilson would have been one of the last quarterbacks we would have expected to take this approach. And and maybe part of the dare here by the Seahawks is whether or not he can pull it off. And maybe they do let it percolate, and they see if he can talk to the media and find a way through the weeds where he can still be go Hawks guy, but also can be, I want to get paid guy. Cause it's going to be very hard to reconcile the two. All right. We're going to take a break. When we return Chris Sims, we will be discussing some yeah, news come out on, of Kansas hurry city. Up. Yep. Get I, had into to, it. I had to refresh my memory. You know, <laughs> instead of helping me out, nah, you throw me under the you just, bus. Yeah. You that's hard. Right. Hurry up. We'll be back with more PFT live right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.